Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to talk about the upcoming changes in the rather large June patch, which brings some significant nerfs to Franks, Chinese, and Malians, as well as some buffs to the weakest civilizations. We'll take a look at the highlights from the patch and talk about what I think are the most significant changes worth keeping an eye on. Starting with the general changes, the first is the Battering and Capped Ram receive some attention, increasing their speed and garrison capacity. The numbers might look small, but we're talking about a 20% speed boost, bringing them up to the speed of a Siege Ram and Armored Elephant now. Indirectly, this is a bit of a nerf to the Armored Elephants in a relative sense, who had their own nerf not that long ago, and would now lose their speed advantage over the Ram line. Remember, garrison units also speed up ramps and increase their attack, so with 50% more carry capacity, maybe players will feel more encouraged to use that ability, or alternately might just feel less tempted by the siege ram upgrade. In addition to this, there were a lot of other relatively small tweaks to common units and techs. Battle elephants got a bit of a buff to their line of sight in their upgrade cost, gillnets was nerfed a bit, and interestingly the castle age mining techs had their wood cost cut in half and a lower food cost. Both are now much more comparable to their Feudal Age equivalents, and are definitely less situational, paying off in about two-thirds the time they did before. On the flip side, Sanctity, which gives monks 50% more HP, had its cost bumped up. Like I said in a recent monk tech ranking video, I consider this one of the best monk techs, if not arguably the best, and I still think that's the case and that it'll give great value. Notably, Heavy Scorpion also gained 5 more HP, which might not sound like a lot, but means they can now survive a direct mangonel or bombard cannon attack with 1 HP left. This is a notable buff to the Romans especially, though obviously other civilizations use scorpions now and then as well. But now let's move on to the civilization specific changes. The first is for the Bengalis, whose Wrath Chariot unique unit no longer takes anti-skirmisher bonus damage when in melee mode. Interestingly, they say this was unintended, though it was well known from their introduction 14 months ago when the DLC came out. It's hard to overstate how massive of a change this is, going from 16 to 63 Skirmisher Javelins, similar to a fully upgraded Knight 60. The change addresses maybe the biggest criticism about the unit, which is that even in melee mode, while it's statistically very similar to a Knight and replaces that unit for Bengalis, they weren't necessarily great against a group of Skirmishers. That won't necessarily hold up anymore, and remember their melee cavalry also recently gained plus 2 attack for skirmishers as a new bonus, again helping in melee mode as well, though of course skirmishers still are a threat if you're in ranged mode. Next up for the Britons, they're receiving gambazins for their militia line. While Britons aren't an infantry civ per se, this is kind of a big deal because it makes long swords and champions much more resilient to skirmishers, which is something that Britons tend to see a lot of. Even without bloodlines, knights are probably still better in a vacuum against skirmishers, but it opens the longsword as a better option in castle and makes their late game champions even more of an anti-trash unit. Moving on to the bohemians, one small buff was to lower the frame delay of the Hussite wagon. This should make them a bit better at micro, though they still have a bug with their firing mechanic, where if you fire their main projectile and move before all three of the minor ones have fired, they only fire the remaining minor projectiles on the next shot meaning if you micro them a lot, you probably lose a lot of their major projectiles that do the vast majority of damage, so you aren't really incentivized to micro them any more than necessary. On the flip side, a discount on the Castle Age mining techs is an indirect buff to Bohemians, at least in terms of the value that their free mining tech bonus gives them, as now their opponents are more likely to match at least their gold and possibly stone income in the late game. Remember, Sanctity also affects their villagers, so that tech being 55 gold more expensive is also a slight nerf, again indirectly. Next up for Bulgarians, their discounted Connick gained a significant amount of new armor. The obvious units I think of being affected here are enemy spear units and camels, who have relatively low attack, so two extra melee armor is pretty significant. For example, it makes the difference between barely losing and barely winning against a Saracen Heavy Camel, or similarly losing to two Halberdiers being flipped into a slight victory. Going into this patch, Bulgarians were basically an average Civ stats-wise, at a 51% overall win rate, and I don't think this was intended to be a major buff, but just encouraged Connick play a bit more, and doubles down on their advantage over the night line against units with especially low attack. Moving on to Burmese, they had a pretty major shakeup, swapping the unique techs. Now in Castle Age, you can get better cavalry against crossbows if you want it, and it's your Imperial Age elephants that can get extra armor, which feels like it might actually line up better with when you want those effects, especially in team games. In addition, the Elite Arambi also had a small change, losing one attack in its Elite version, but is now affected by chemistry. 
the net effect is they end up being the same, but chemistry has some immediate value. Next up, for Byzantines, Greek fire is now going to affect the Dromen and be more effective for Bombard Towers. Admittedly, last patch, when they first introduced the new effect for Bombard Towers, it felt like a last-minute addition that didn't get properly tested, as it seemed to do basically nothing against enemies and also hurt your own units. Next up, a very significant decision was made for Chinese, nerfing their tech discount by 5% in each age. For the feudal age techs especially, that means you get half the bonus you did before, going from saving up to 100 resources in feudal to now probably just 50 or something in that ballpark. Later on, the proportional impact of this change is weaker, but it still adds up to hundreds of extra resources that you'll have to spend. In the Chinese Civ overview, for example, I thought 2,500 resources saved by the bonus seemed pretty reasonable, and now it's probably more like 1,500 throughout a long game, obviously depending on which tax you get and when. For the general ladder, this is a tough change, as for sub-1200 players, Chinese were stats-wise the worst Civ leading into this. That said, for the highest rated 1%, they do a lot better, and this is clearly a change with tournament and the top 1% of players in mind. We'll see if this ends up having the desired effect, and if they'll possibly drop even below a 40% win rate for sub-1000 ELO players now. But speaking of nerfs, let's talk about the Franks, who had their Forger bonus drop from 15% to 10%. Franks are always the most popular pick every patch on the ladder, and have been dominant for a long time across every ELO, basically since the Forger bonus was originally added. Again, it feels like a very safe approach to just make them slightly more generic, going from 25 to 15 and now just a 10% Forger boost. Interestingly, they're not consistently number one the last year like they used to be, partly because of Gurjars and Hindustanis, as a couple of good anti-meta picks with strong camels, and Malians are another resurging Sith with, again, good camels. With this change, we might be permanently moving out of the phase where Franks were always number one on the ladder. And for example, last patch they were number 5 on Arabia, between 1000 and 1200 ELO. But on the topic of camels, next up is the Hindustanis, who receive a few notable buffs. They were a great performer last year, but remember they had their villager discount nerfed by 5% across the board, which made them fall out of the top tier in pretty dramatic fashion. To compensate, the unique tech Grand Trunk Road now has a new effect, reducing the market trading fee from 30% to 10%, losing guilds by getting essentially a better version now from the unique tech on top of its usual effects, while also being cheaper than before. The Ghulam was also buffed with plus 1 attack and plus 10 HP, and if that sounds vaguely familiar, it's because they lost HP in a patch last August, after a lot of complaints that they were too strong. But remember, with their more expensive villagers, the Hindustanis these days are not the top tier Civ that they used to be. Next, for Italians, as one of the lowest performing civs for a while, they received a small buff and a cost reduction for their unique tech. It's not much, but I'm sure Italian players will take it. Moving on, Koreans received a larger shakeup. They've been frankly also doing pretty terribly for a while, recently being the worst civ if you look at 1200 plus elo on all maps combined. They're officially an archer civ these days, with free archer upgrades and a wood discount on non-siege units, but that's being taken even further now. In the new patch, they're dropping their 20% wood discount unit bonus and gaining archers and infantry cost minus 50% wood, with warships staying at minus 20%. It probably goes without saying, but that's a significant change for archers, saving 12 wood each, and is a great bonus on paper. Even with a modest group of 20 archers upgraded to crossbows, that's 240 wood that's already saved, in addition to the effect for your trash units later on, and for cavalry archers, they actually save an entire farm for every 3 units. Notably, their warships and war wagons still cost the same as before, but another tweak is that now turtle ships are affected by siege engineers, giving them one additional range on top of getting plus one range for their elite version last patch. Next up, Magyars are receiving a new team bonus, replacing foot archer plus two line of sight with cavalry archers being trained 25% faster. This new team bonus actually works for Magyars fairly well, as while you have recurve bow for extra range and attack in Imperial Age, now you also get something a bit earlier to help you mass them up, or alternately help out your teammates. Moving on to Malay, they received a notable nerf to their swordsman line, now losing Gambazins. Remember, Malay recently got the infantry blacksmith upgrades for free, which brought them up to being an average civ according to the stats, and gave them a renewed focus on infantry. Considering their unique tech to remove the Militia Line's gold cost, apparently they didn't want the plus one pierce armor thrown on top of that as well. 
Next up for Malians, their gold miner bonus is predictably being dropped from 15% to 10%. This isn't surprising to see, given they've been a clear top 3 civ ever since their gold bonus was overhauled. Make no mistake, they'll still be a very good civilization, and extremely flexible like before, but just not quite as scary. Moving on, Persians had a minor change to their war elephant line of sight, but the developers left a little tease here, saying let's talk about the elephant in the room. Changes are on the horizon for Persians. Theoretically, if it was a straightforward change, like adding battle elephants, I suspect they would have just done it. So it sounds like this is a bigger scale redesign that they don't think is quite ready yet. Personally, I don't mind Persians all that much, and in fact I like them in team games, but it'll be interesting to see where the devs take them. Next up for Portuguese, their Fateria is now going to cost a bit more gold and stone. I've done way too many videos on the Fateria and its payback time, but this change should make them a bit harder to get out, especially on a smaller economy. Their 300 stone cost especially is going to add up fast, putting them at almost half the stone cost of a castle now. Moving on, another minor change is coming to the Slavs, who are losing fervor, but now have their monks move 20% faster as a team bonus. Basically, they get something a bit better than free fervor, and are doubling down even more on their identity as a monk civilization. Another simple change is coming to the Turks, whose non-elite Janissary is going to lose one range. That means they'll no longer outrange a whole bunch of popular counters, including mangonels, crossbows, and elite skirmishers. Keep in mind they keep their 8 range when elite, making that upgrade even more important, and do still outrange town centers in Castle Age. Turks are actually in a pretty good spot these days, and I think are doing better than most people realize. I don't think it's that strange to see them nerfed, as while they're not that great on Arabia, on other maps they can be pretty good, in no small part thanks to the Janissary. Next, for the Vietnamese, they received a big change. Their ecotex, in addition to not costing wood, now also research twice as fast. While that helps a bit to get horse collar before farms and getting double bit axe a tiny bit earlier, to me it's wheelbarrow that jumps to mind here. Now instead of being set back 3 villagers when you pick up that tech, you'll now be set back just 1.5, with also remember no wood cost. It's not as good as Vikings, obviously, but grabbing Wheelbarrow with 10 farms starts to look pretty good, compared to the 16 or 18 farms that civs usually aim for when getting it. In addition to that, they also are receiving a discount on their Imperial Skirmisher upgrade. Lowering the gold cost for a trash unit upgrade is always a nice change, and looking at it now, 450 gold does sound like it was probably too much for a bit of extra attack and plus one pierce armor. For a bit of context, Vietnamese have been getting absolutely crushed on the ladder, We'll see what effect the faster research techs will have, but I think it'll give them a noticeable bump in the mid game, where they're currently struggling the most. But finally, we should talk about the Romans. They're coming to ranked play, and have had a few changes leading into that. First, their galley bonus was reworked to no longer give an extra attack in the early game and plus 2 armor later. That's been simplified to just plus 1 armor for the galley line and Droman all game, in what seems like a pretty big nerf on water for a Civ already lacking Bracer. In addition to that, the unique tech Ballistas also no longer gives them faster attack, but instead plus 2 attack on the galley line. At this point, they're beaten by Saracen Galleons head to head, while also having one less range and needing a unique tech. Early game they're decent with plus 1 armor, but late game I'm not too impressed. Remember, Heavy Scorpions were also improved with plus 5 HP, making that an especially important upgrade against Mangonels. Centurions also now automatically move behind infantry instead of in front, which is a nice little attention to detail as they're quite expensive, and the whole point is to just have a few to buff your infantry. In addition to this, there were also some return of Rome changes, like the Academy and Cavalry Line's attack rates, but I wouldn't say I know enough about Age of Empires 1 balance to really evaluate these. Interestingly, Lacviette got a buff though, despite feeling very strong to me already. So that's the June patch, with a few big nerfs coming to some top performers, including Franks, Chinese, and Malians, albeit with just tweaking their bonuses down 5%. To me, the most notable buffs on the other hand were to Hindustanis, Vietnamese, and Koreans, and in those cases I think the devs got a bit more creative. We'll have to see what comes out of the Persian tease, and I like that it implies some continued updates in not too long. Between that and the Romans coming to ranked, there's definitely a lot going on in AoE2 at the moment, and it sounds like more to come. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.